I'm Elaine Smith, the Artistic Director of the Clamor Theatre Company. We're holding these creative conversations with playwrights, with actors, with directors, so that you can find out more about Clamor Theatre and about the artists who work with us. Welcome to this edition of a Clamor Creative Conversation. Today we're speaking with Leah Roth Barsanti, a playwright selected for our fourth annual Playwrights Retreat, whose play, Succulence, The Art of Adulting, or Reasons I Am a Terrible Roommate, is going to be read on February the 26th on Zoom as part of Clay and Water 2022. Welcome, Leah. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, we're great. We're excited to have you. So uh, please just introduce yourself. Tell our viewers a little bit about your background, your bio, whatever you think we should know. Sure, yeah. Um, so hi, I'm Leah roth -Barsanti. I am a playwright who is currently based in Chicago, Illinois, um, though I have spent some time in Florida. I did live in Florida for four years, so um, that's kind of the Florida connection for me. I'm, I'm really excited to be uh, doing more work uh, with, with one of the strangest states I've ever lived in. <laughs> um, <laughs> But um, in terms of my kind of creative background, um, I started playwriting in undergraduate. Uh, before that, I was really more or considered myself more of a poet, um, but really fell in love with playwriting um, during my undergraduate career at Washington University. Uh, their playwriting program is run by Carter Lewis, who's uh, just a beautiful playwright. And um, the first play I wrote was absolutely garbage, but I, I loved writing it. Um, and I kind of went from there. Um, and I actually, that led me to graduate school at Northwestern University uh, here in Chicago. Um, and I graduated from that in 2020. Uh, their program is writing for the screen and stage. So um, kind of got my feet wet with some uh, television and, and film writing there, which I've been um, pursuing a little bit more than I used to uh, postgraduate. Um, but Graduated in 2020, which has been, you know, two weird years for theater that I've had my master's, but um, here we are. And uh, yeah, that's that's me. <laughs> okay, good. So let's talk a little bit about succulents, the art of adulting or reasons I am a terrible roommate without giving away too many spoilers. So uh, what do you wanna tell us about that? Yeah, so um, that actually came out of a class that I, I took in graduate school um, that was about um, writing the eco play or writing um, for, you know, writing for the planet, essentially. And um, the idea kind of came out of giving plants a voice, again, without getting too much away. Um, but also kind of at the heart of the play is, I think, I write a lot for millennials and particularly millennial women. And um, at the heart of the play is kind of this millennial, I want to say um, crisis <laughs> that uh, people of my generation are having, that we've kind of inherited a planet that is um, in crisis, that is that was not taken care of by the previous generations. Um, and we are kind of tasked with saving it. And also we're a generation that like very high expectations have been kind of placed on in that sense, but also in a lot of other senses um, since we were born really. And kind of just struggling with that and like what that means in the sense of having to be perfect and not being able to do that, um, both in terms of like being kind to the planet, but also in terms of like everything. And the main character of the play, Daphne, definitely struggles with that throughout the piece. Okay, good. So why did you decide to apply to our retreat? So I actually applied to the retreat um, last time, last year. And um, 
I didn't get in, but I got very kind words from y'all on my play. Um, I just found the opportunity through various Facebook groups and email chains I was on. I'm not even sure which one it came through. Um, but I didn't get in, but you all gave me very kind words on the play I submitted to that, which I believe was anxiety play, um, which is also another little millennial love letter <laughs> because that's what I write. Um, but very kind words on that. And then you, um, and then, you know, I, I kind of kept it on my radar and, and I applied this year and got in. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I also wanted to go to Florida in the winter and be warm, but we had to do this virtually. <laughs> yes, that is unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, we, we're not too happy about that. But virtual has its advantages. Yeah, it does, um, for sure. So uh, do you have anything particular that you're hoping to get out of the reading or the retreat? Yeah, so one thing I've struggled with, again, I'm not, I, I'm kind of hedging on my uh, summaries here because I'm not trying to give everything away or anything away really, but um, is dramatizing things that are inhuman, that are not human and don't have human wants and needs, um, but very much do have wants and needs in their own right. So that's kind of something I want to dive into and explore. There's also a relationship in the play that I didn't start off writing towards, but I kind of found it coming out in the draft as I was writing the play. Um, so kind of going back through and strengthening in that relationship and kind of seeing where those seeds came from that like I didn't even put in there intentionally, but that I started noticing and then um, that led to that relationship between two characters. I'm not going to say who, but between two characters developing. Good. Okay. Uh, now tell me, do you have a favorite play of your own, whether it's been produced or not? Yeah, I mean, look, they're all my babies, so I I love them all equally. Not, but but one that I would really like to see produced is I have an adaptation of Hills Like White Elephants by Ernest Hemingway called Elephant, um, and it is a really it's a little bit of a departure from what I normally write because it's not comedic. And my plays, while I would say our dramas always do have like, mostly do have like a comedic bench to them. Um, but this play is, is pretty overtly dramatic and um, deals with in a very deep and, and kind of personal way, um, what it means to be a female character in literature and also abortion. Um, so it's a, it hits and it hits hard. And um, I have had some interest around it, but um, then a pandemic happened. <laughs> so I'm hoping that one day it is able to get produced. Um, I I call it my Femingway play because I've put a feminist bench on Hemingway. And um, I'm really excited about, that, about the fact that I did that and just like kind of the implications of like, writing from the perspective of a female character in, I think, one of the most mask um, writers of all time. So. Yeah, good. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so now one of my favorite questions, uh, what are three favorite plays that you've either read or seen by other writers and what do you like about them? And I love this question. I prepared for this question. So um, <laughs> uh, I was like, oh, of all the plays I love, which three can I can I pick? Um, so in terms of like classic plays and not classical, but like classic um, in, in, in the canon, um, my favorite and in a play I would, would love to see produced and never have, um, my favorite play, classic play is Orpheus Descending by Tennessee Williams. Um, a lot of other Tennessee Williams works get a lot of attention, um, but that is my personal favorite play. I think it has really interesting female characters in it and um, is an adaptation of a Greek myth, which maybe my succulents play also is in a very, very loose sense. Um, but it's a great play. I think it needs to be produced more. I did my thesis on Tennessee Williams and, and very much focused uh, for undergrad because my focus was on 20th century American and uh, British drama. Um, so Tennessee Williams was was really the playwright I honed in on for my thesis. And I dealt a lot with Orpheus descending in that piece, um, in that paper. 
so I would, I would really like to uh, see it produce, see it produce more. I don't, I think of all his works, it doesn't get enough attention. Um, in terms of modern plays, um, Jen Silverman is a really big inspiration for me. Um, her play, Collective Rage, a play in five, four buddies. It has a very long title and I'm not going to butcher it <laughs> here today, but um, it really, I saw it and I've read it and it really, you know, opened up the idea of what a play could be for me. Um, it's a care. it's a play that doesn't, I think, have a central character and really kind of breaks a lot of the rules of the well-made play, but in a way that's super effective and in a way that's like, I think feminizes what a play can be um it doesn't lead to like one specific climax it has many um so it's it's really nice it's a good play and then um another one another writer who just has been a huge inspiration for me and she teaches at northwestern now but i like missed her she started the year after i graduated is uh erin courtney her play map of virtue is one that i still can't quite figure out but that i think about literally all the time um, and how you craft something like that and how you create a mystery that's never really solved, but still has a satisfying ending. And in that play and all her plays, just the way she plays with structure and the way she plays with plot, um, it, it, she's just, she's just a fascinating writer. So. Great. Um, I may have to stop ans asking this question because my reading list is getting way too long. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you know, anyway, so for our viewers, if you would like to know more about Leah, you can look for her and her work on the New Play Exchange website, which is newplayexchange.org. And if you would like to attend the free reading on Zoom of Leah's play, let me not butcher this title, Succulence, The Art of Adulting, or Reasons I Am a Terrible Roommate is going to be on February 26th at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern on Zoom, and you can make a reservation at Clamor's website, which is also the place to go for information on our other events. That is clamortheater.org, and you can find us on Facebook as Clamor Theater Company. We will post all of those URLs in the description below. And if you'd like to see more interviews like this one, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Leah, thank you for taking the time to speak with us today and for letting our viewers get to know something about you. We are really looking forward to the reading and we are really glad you've been able to join us for Clay and Water 2022. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I'm looking forward to it too. Yay.